Hello beautiful people and welcome back to Wine Chat. My name is Emma and I'm a certified sommelier with a mission to spread wine knowledge and to help you drink better. Want the ultimate way to look like a total badass wine pro? Want to knock the socks off your friends and family on your next wine and Zoom night? Well then do I have the video for you. Today I'm going to teach you how to taste wine like a pro. And for all you wine pros that are watching this out there, remember sometimes it's good to refresh your basic technique so there's no excuse for anyone to not watch this video. Tasting your wine compared to drinking your wine means that you have to stop and think and assess what you're drinking. And from doing this, you're gonna learn little things about exactly what's in your glass. And over time, you're going to get better and better at tasting wine. So there's four important steps when it comes to wine tasting. You need to look, smell, taste, and think. So let's dive into the chat on how to taste wine like a pro. Step one is to look. Do a visual inspection of your wine. Now this is best done on a white background so that you can accurately assess the wine. And no worries if you don't have one, just slip a piece of white paper under your glass of wine. The colors and the wine's appearance can reveal little clues about what you are about to drink. What is the clarity of the wine? Is there any sediment in it? If there's some sediment, this can be an indication of an older age or that the wine has not been fined or filtered. How intense is the color of the wine? Now hold it at a 45 degree angle and look down at it from above and see how far the color extends from the bowl of the glass up into the rim. For a red wine like mine, if the color is fully pigmented up to the rim, it means that the color intensity is deep. What is the color? Red wines run on a scale from purple to brown. The most common color for a red wine is ruby. However, if your wine is purple or has a purplish tinge, it's a surefire sign that the wine is very young. If the wine is more red than brown, but does have some kind of orangey browny tinges in there, then you would call this garnet. If the wine is more brown than red, you would describe that as tawny. Tawny and brown colors in a wine can indicate very old age and oxidation. Now we come to the part where I realize I forgot to talk about the colors of white wine. So the most common color you'll find in white wine is lemon. And white wines run on a scale from lemon green to brown. If there's a little bit of kind of greenness to the wine, you'd call it lemon green. Wines that are considered gold have a hint of orange and brown in them. And if the wine is really amber or brown, these are going to be wines that are really old or have gone through oxidation. Give your wine a swirl and see what kind of legs, also known as tears, the wine will show. So a wine with a higher alcohol and or a higher sugar level will have thicker legs that will stay on the glass for longer compared to a wine that is lower in alcohol and or has a lower sugar level. Step two is smell. Now this is one of the most important parts when it comes to wine tasting. And this is because the majority of what you taste actually comes through what you smell. Now don't jump in and go crazy swirling your wine straight away. Give your wine a quick sniff before you start swirling it. And just see, are there any aromas that jump out at you right away? Sometimes some aromas might be a little bit more on the delicate side and they might get kind of hidden and overshadowed when you start swirling your wine. So don't skip this step. And now you can give your wine a swirl. Now the reason why we do this is because it lets oxygen come in and helps to release some of the flavor and aroma compounds in your wine. Now, time for another sniff. Think about what you smell. Don't try and think too hard, just let it come to mind. Now, fruit aromas are the easiest things to identify in a wine, and this is because almost every single wine will have some form of fruit aroma. 
For example, are you smelling red fruits, black fruits, blue fruits? If you have a white wine, are you smelling some citrus, tropical, green fruit, stone fruit? I mean, the list is almost endless. And then after you've done the fruits, think, what herbs can I smell? What herbs do I have in my cupboard that I would usually cook with that I can identify in this wine? What spices can I smell? Perhaps a whiff of black pepper, which I can definitely smell in this wine. Does the wine smell like it's in a good condition? Most wine faults will be able to be identified by the nose. Have a watch of our Wine Fault series for more information. I will link both of the videos down in the description below. Are there any secondary aromas like vanilla or some toast or kind of cedar wood? These are aromas that are created in the post-fermentation winemaking process. So things like uh, aging in some oak barrels, using oak staves or chips, maloactic fermentation, lee stirring, all those kind of things create the secondary aromas. What about territory aromas? Things like coffee, leather, kind of forest floor, caramel or more kind of cooked and baked fruits. These are things that come from aging and oxidation. And now you've got to think, how intense is the wine that I'm smelling? If it's very light, then even sticking your nose into the glass and trying to smell it, it's going to be really hard to get many aromas out. However, if you're sitting here next to the glass, even go woof, and you can smell so many aromas jumping out at you, then the intensity is going to be really high. Now pro tip, when I am smelling my wine, when I'm about to taste it, I like to close my eyes and this really helps me focus on what I'm smelling and really helps my nose just kind of focus in on the wine and I'm not distracted from my other senses. Now step number three is the best part of wine tasting that we all love and that is to drink it. Now go ahead and have a sip of your wine. Feel free to give it another swirl if you want or just give it a sip. Now you might see some wine pros playing around with the wine in their mouths like Now this is doing a very similar thing as to when we first swirled the wine before we sniffed it. It's helping us get as much kind of flavor and clues out of the wine as we can. Now that you've had a sip or two of your wine, have a think. Does what you taste match up with what you smelt? Are there any extra flavors that are showing themselves to you on your palate? Anything else that is really popping out at you. Now aside from flavor, there is a few other things that you can think of once you've had a sip or two of your wine. If you're trying a red wine like I am, think about what are the tannins like. Tannins are found in all red wines as they are mostly extracted from the skins of the grape during fermentation. They bind to your saliva and they dry up your mouth and make it feel a little bit rough. Now, have a think, are these tannins, are they kind of unripe and green? Are they really aggressive and rough? Or are they smooth and velvety? What is the body of the wine like? Is it really light and almost water-like? Or is it heavier and more fuller bodied on your palate? What's the acidity like? Is it really high and tart, almost like you just sucked on a lemon? Is it crisp and sharp and almost kind of refreshing in a way? Or is it really low and light, almost like it's not there at all, perhaps making the wine a little bit flabby? Most people will feel the acidity kind of on the sides of their tongue and it might make your mouth kind of clench up a little bit and highly acidic wines will make your mouth water. How high is the alcohol? 
Alcohol in a wine helps to contribute to the texture and the body of the wine. A wine that has a really high alcohol may give you kind of like a hot and burning sensation and it's going to make the wine feel like it has a much fuller body. Whereas a wine that has a slightly lower alcohol level will feel slightly less in body. What about the length of your wine? Do the flavors and textures stay around and evolve and develop on your palate long after the wine has left your mouth? Or does it all just completely disappear as soon as you swallow? Something to think about. Finally, it is time for step number four, and that is to think. And to think, we're gonna put together all the pieces that we've just gone over and bring it all together. Does the wine seem balanced? Is there one component that kind of overshadows all the rest of them? Or does the wine come together in a beautiful harmony? Overall, would you say the wine has a low intensity or a really high intensity? And is that a good thing or is it a bad thing? Is the wine complex overall or is it really simple? Do you think the wine is ready to be drunk now? Like, is it at its peak? Is it tasting beautiful and delicious? Or could it benefit from perhaps another five to 10 years of aging to maybe soften it down and bring all the components together? And now the most important question of all is, do you enjoy it? And there you have it. That is the beginner's guide to tasting wine like a pro. So now you can impress almost anybody. If you've enjoyed this video, please do show it some love. Give it a like, subscribe to the Wine Chat channel if you haven't already. And please, please share the video if you really did enjoy it so we can spread the gospel of wine education. Well, that is all from me for this week. I'll see you guys next week. And remember to drink better, be better.